Okay, so welcome back. Anyway, now let us write our first hello world program. This is a standard thing which pretty much everybody learns at the very beginning. How to print hello world onto the screen. And now we will need to make our program write this to standard output. In order to achieve this, we have to use specific functions. These functions are part of standard C++ libraries, which come with C++. One of them is IO stream, which is short for input output stream. It is written like this, IO stream. So IO stands for input output. In order to include this library in your program, we will have to use the include command. The syntax is fairly simple. This needs to go on top, of course, but I'm just writing pseudocode here just to show you how it looks like. So include and then some library, I don't know, depending on which library you're using. For IO stream, we will type it in like this, IO stream. There you go. So in that fashion, we will include it on top. However, inside the IO stream library, we have a variable C out. So C out, which represents our S, which represents our standard output. C out stands for character out. All standard libraries in C++, they are grouped under STD namespace. Now a namespace is a way of logically grouping functions, variables, types, so that they don't interfere with each other. This way, we can have two functions of the same name, but in two different namespaces. Let me give you an example. So we will utilize pretty much all of this straight away. But here I'm writing the studio code just so you can have a look at it. Okay, so name, by the way, pseudo code is, uh, that's not real code, just basically some lines, notes, if you will. Let's put it like that. So if I type if namespaces, let me just explain what they are. If you type in name space, and let's say we have a namespace A and namespace B. So let's say that namespace A has a function, tra -la, 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 la that. And namespace B can also have the function of the same name, tra -la, 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 la yeah, there you go. So these two namespaces have uh, two functions of the same name, but these two functions are in no way related to one another. Now we can choose which function we will use. To access a function inside of a namespace, we can use a scope operator. This is a scope operator, colon, colon. For example, if we would like to access function ta -la 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 from namespace A, we would do this, a scope operator function name, tra -la 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 -la. and b scope operator, uh, -la 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 -la. I've like, I, I know I overdid it with tra -la 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 -la, but yeah, anyway, forgive me for that. I could have named my functions pretty much anything. Anyway, this is how you would call those functions, how you would access them. Uh, they can be, as I said, two completely different functions, in no way related to one another, fulfilling two completely different purposes. So finally, let us go ahead and use what we have learned down below in our code and write our program. So you can safely go ahead and delete all of this, climb to the top, and type the following. So include IO stream. Yep, I've spelled that in a proper way. And I'm gonna delete these spaces here. Why am I doing that? Well, it makes no difference in terms of code functionality, but it does make a difference in terms of aesthetics. And it's very important for your code to be readable by others. Uh, why? Well, most of the time, more than one person will work on the same code, and you will be criticized if your code is not readable. So make sure that your code looks very nice, 
uh, that it is a pleasure to read it. That when somebody sees it, it's a perfect. It's in perfect arrangement, perfectly indented, uh, perfectly separated, etc. This is very important. This I'm. It is important when you like submit samples for a job application, either as a freelancer on the net or when you submit samples of your work to companies, etc. They will immediately, the very first thing that they will see is how your code is written. Is it neat? Is it nice? Is it ordered? Or is it just something that you have written for yourself and that only you and you can read and no one else? So make sure that your code is very readable. Have a standard by which you write it and stick to it. Go ahead and find. Go ahead. I would advise you actually to go online and have a look at coding styles, how to make your code look nice, etc. We will. I'm pretty sure we'll talk about it somewhere along the line or as a part of the general scope of things. But in any case, I do believe that you get the idea. Anyway, so IOStream, we are including a library for input output. Next up, we have our main function main function is the entry point of the program and within the body of the main function we will call so std colon colon c out lesser lesser than sign hello co uh, comma udemy users Okay, so like this. And this will be written to std out. So we are accessing c out from namespace std, which is a standard namespace used here. So I could have also written it like this using namespace std semicolon. Semicolon is used at the end of these line and the end of the code at the end of a line of code in order to terminate it. It is a line terminator. And in this case, I would no longer require std c out. But as of late, this is a bad practice, or it is considered to be a bad practice in general. So just type in std colon colon like this and don't use using namespace std. I know it seems very tempting to type in using namespace std and never again having to write std anywhere down below but you can cause a good you can cause confusion etc because if you have two functions that have the same name and if you have two namespaces here uh, the program might get confused you might cause problems for yourself so don't use it like this and just go ahead and do this std colon colon that's it. Simple as that. I know I said I would write hello world, but I lied. Forgive me. It's the way it is. So as previously said, C out is our variable that represents standard output. We also said that everything from uh, standard C++ libraries is grouped under STD namespace. So STD namespace. So to access the cout variable, we use std colon colon cout. And lesser than lesser than sign is the insertion operator. So yeah, cout insertion. And then I don't know, some text or a very or something else. Well, not a, this, this is actually a, this is actually considered a string or something else, I don't know, whatever. Actually, let's create an example like this. A lesser than lesser than B. So A lesser than lesser than B means insert. So insert B into A. In our example, it is insert hello Udemy users into C out. So insert this into C out. That's it. Keep in mind that all C++ statements end with a semicolon. C++ ignores white spaces, so you can also write the the semicolon in the next row. So we could have like used this, but this doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. But I'm just saying that C++ ignores uh, ign that 
C++ ignores white spaces and they don't matter at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't take them into consideration at all. This is, as I said, this is correct, but it is considered a good practice to put a semicolon at the end of the statement as we have placed it here. Your string that you want to print to standard output must be also enclosed in double quotes. So double quotes, and this in between is a is some sort of a string. So it says hello, comma, space, Udemy, space, users, uh, exclamation, exclamation mark. Okay, so now that we have actually written that, we are still not done. We still have more, we still have some way to go. And we will learn a very important concept here. Every function must return some value. To return a value, we write return and then something. So like this. Return something. I don't know, some sort of variable or whatever. It doesn't matter. And that is written at the end of the function. It doesn't have to be written at the end of the function, but it usually is. Uh, when the return statement is executed, the function terminates. So keep that in mind. There are, there are cases in with recursion, etc., where the function does terminate, but it calls itself back up again. But we will talk about that way down the line. For the time being, take it for what it is. In main function, and only in main function, uh, and only in main, function is considered to write return zero. So if I write it at the end, return zero, there we go. So if we don't write anything, return zero is considered to be there. But it is a good practice to always write return zero by ourselves. I would not advise skipping it at all. This means that the program executed successfully. Zero means success. So in general, pretty much any program out there on the planet, if uh, it runs and it, if it returns zero, it's a success. It works, fantastic. Okay, so that would be it, uh, what I wanted to say here. And we will continue onwards. Okay, so there are some exceptions to the rules which I have stated above about the return values and uh, about, uh, well, mainly about the return values and about the fact that the function terminates with the return value, etc. There are some exceptions, in a way, I would say, but I don't want to burden you with them now, for the time being, in the very beginning. Take it for what it is, and later, as we move along the way, I will show you more and more, and you will begin to understand more advanced concepts. Anyway. I bid you all farewell, and we shall see each other in the next tutorial.